Hello, welcome to another episode of The Losers Win Again. I am your host, Jacob Brown, and we are here to talk about week one free agency and the big moves that have happened this offseason. Uh, I got a special guest with me, our first ever guest, my brother, Eddie Brown. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Just uh, had a long day at work. And I'm looking, I look forward to talking to you every day on Sunday about football. I mean, it sucks that it's off season, but it's also fun to see all the new pieces and their new, you know, positions and everything. Yeah, it, so, seemed, it seemed like it started a lot earlier this year. Like, Tom Brady. It happened fast. Yeah, it happened fast. Like, the stuff that we weren't, wouldn't expect. It just seemed like things were moving a lot quicker this off offseason. Uh, but... Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of big moves. Uh, We're basically going to be focusing on the offensive side of the ball uh, because we both like playing fantasy football. Uh, This is uh, something we always spend a lot of our time on, talking about who's going to be doing what. And I think this is a good way for people to study up on certain players and how they can get uh, more information about players and their positions. But anyway... uh, Let's go ahead and get on to the main topic. Tom Brady unretires. <laughs> so the first big news that really happened at, during this free agency period was Tom Brady dropping the bombshell that he unretired Sunday night. Everyone was getting ready for March Madness, and boom, Tom Brady unretired. Everyone forgot about March Madness. Uh I really think that this is going to be a big deal for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But before we get into that, go ahead and hit that like, hit that subscribe, hit that notification bell if you like the content. But yeah, Eddie, uh, what do you think? Tom Brady, unretired. What do you think this means for the Bucs? I mean, he's found the fountain of youth. Last year, 2021, 5,300 and 16 yards passing, 43 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. His QBR was 102.1. He's he's the GOAT. There's nothing else you can say. I used to hate on Tom Brady when he was on the Patriots because I hated losing to him. But now that he's in the NFC, he's, he's still doing it. He's proven he's one of the best, if not the best of all time. Uh, what do you think about... Uh... Did you ever watch the uh, Tom Brady uh, documentary they just put on ESPN, Tom vs. Time? No, I didn't get to watch it. I wanted to. Uh, I don't have ESPN+. Plus. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I, I caught a little bit of it, and, like, this guy just loves football, man. Like, like he, he, he can't stand a minute of not talking about it. Like, he was talking about his family, and somehow he, like, found a way to compare that to football during the documentary. It was, it was pretty funny. <laughs> he's, a, he's a really interesting guy, though. I mean, I watched the barbershop interview, watched a couple of the other stuff, you know. I, I, I've grown more respect for him since he went to Tampa. I will say this. I mean, this is the only time we're ever going to get to see somebody this good play this game for so long. Nobody ever is going to be able to do that. Either. Yeah, it won't be duplicated for sure. But let's move on to uh, what is going to happen this offseason with some other players surrounding him. And this is really going to affect how good they are in the long run. Rob Gronkowski, what's your thoughts? You think he's going to retire? You think he's going to stay with the Bucks? Go somewhere else? What do you think? I mean, they're they're best friends, man. I mean, Gronk has business opportunities in Tampa. So does Tom. It makes sense for him to stay in Tampa. The only other team that I see him potentially going to would be the Bills. Yeah, I, I've thought about that as well. And, and there's somebody else on this list that we're going to be talking about maybe going to Buffalo. But, uh, yeah, I really do think he's going to end up staying in Tampa as well. Uh, it's kind of hard for me to see him playing with anywhere else. Uh, but uh, there's somebody else on this list, Chris Godwin. Uh, he got injured in the middle of the year last year. And uh, will he even be back at the beginning of the year next year? What's your thoughts on that? I mean, it could be the way that medicine is nowadays. It could be 
he could start week one, or he might have some setbacks. You don't know. I mean, the human body, it's really hard to figure out. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I can't, I'm not a doctor. Yeah. Uh, so I think he's going to be, he's going to stay on the, the, there's no way he's going to leave the Bucks. I mean, they had a chance to go win a Super Bowl. Well, he played, he played hard for them every single time. He's coexisted with Mike Evans the entire time. He never complained. He wasn't like Antonio Brown and throwing off his jersey in the middle of anything because he didn't like something. He's a good player. He's a good teammate. And I don't see why he would leave them when he has another chance to win another ring. Yeah, uh, definitely something to keep an eye on. Uh, what do you think about them signing Russell Gage to a contract? Uh, that was a pretty uh, recent uh, I think it was, I believe it was like Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, I was real surprised they got him on the squad. What do you think about Russell Gage? Fantasy wise, he's always been really, really dependable, especially when he was put in a role where he was the second option. It's obvious he's going to at least be the second option in Tampa Bay, but if somebody gets hurt, he can step up to the plate. And I'm really excited for this for him, for Tom, because he's a young player. He's going to be real impressionable. Tom Brady's going to do his Tom Brady magic. And uh, he's going to become a lot better player. Yeah, I think the same thing. It's like uh, last year he had a career year. Uh, most of it was without Calvin Ridley. No Julio Jones. Uh, he really took uh, a step ahead uh, in his career. I really like where this is headed, and I think Tom Brady will bring the best out of him. Uh, but that also brings me to talk about Mike Evans. We all know Mike Evans is good, but without Chris Goblin, without Antonio Brown, with the newly requ- acquired uh, Russell Gage, do you think Mike Evans will take a big leap in fantasy value this year? wise he's always been consistent but there is a lot of pressure to put on him and he's going to be a lot more receiver or a lot more defenses double teaming him you know I mean he's a big target in the red zone if Gronk's not there he's their number one option in the red zone right yeah uh, I agree I, I think I think he will have a bit higher value come draft time because last year, I believe, he was getting picked around like the 20th to 25th pick, somewhere in between there. Um, But I definitely think he could be a top five wide receiver taken uh, if news goes the way we think think it's going to go with Godwin missing some time. Uh, But this kind of brings a wrench into it. Uh, Recently, I heard... Julio Jones and Tom Brady been DMing each other on Instagram about teaming up together. You think there's any uh, possibility that could happen? As a Ravens fan, I really hope it does. <laughs> but as a a guy that watched it, it just shock sometimes at the way Julio Jones played football. And the CMF, you know, at least viewed by the NFL as a shell of himself, but he's, I mean, he's not that much older than me. He's still in in the prime of his life. I mean, and to play with Tom Brady would be a life-changing thing for him. Um, So they could use him in roles, but if that happens, Russell Gage is going to be returning punts. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree. Um, it's just weird seeing the hate on Julio. I honestly think he just showed up in Tennessee and saw that Ryan Tannehill was an average, below average quarterback and just didn't uh, fit in. I mean, when you had one guy throwing you the ball for 10 plus years, what do you think is going to happen? There was just no chemistry. <laughs> Uh, and last thing I want to talk about with uh, Brady here. Uh, do you think Leonard Fournette's going to return to the uh, Bucks? This is what I think about Leonard Fournette. He is really tight with Tom Brady. I, think. I really think they are. 
but Leonard Fournette is um, he's a pretty he's probably top 15 in the NFL as a running back the way he plays the way he's matured as a person he could get money elsewhere and you could I mean can you imagine him in let's say Kansas City that would that would be scary yeah so I mean if he's available he's gonna listen to you have to think about this he's he plays football for money because he's trying to like feed his family you know well, so, yeah, and that's one thing I kind of wanted to make a point of is that he's been taking pay cuts the last two years to play with Tampa Bay. Uh, I really think he's going after the big payday. Uh, I think Atlanta could have been a spot. We had some unfortunate news. with. Now we're moving on to the big trade moves. Uh, and man, there was a lot of them. The first one I want to get after is Russell Wilson getting traded to the Denver Broncos. Yeah, it's a big move. And it just makes the AFC West even more of a powerhouse. Uh, What do you think about the Russell Wilson trade? I think Russell Wilson may be a top six quarterback in the NFL. I think he... Hold, hold yes. up, hold up. You said uh, top mean, five the other day. Now <laughs> top six? Okay, well, you might have, that was another conversation. You, you, we might not want to get into it because we'll talk all day about that. <laughs> but I think he's a good quarterback, man. I really do. I think he is a good leader. I think he wants to win a championship. It's really tough sledding going against uh, Justin Herbert, yep. Patrick Mahomes, mm-hmm. and... Somebody we'll probably talk about another day, but Derek Carr is is pretty good too. Y'all keep forgetting about Derek Carr because he's had bad management around him. Well, you he's brought up you brought up championships, and uh, I I just watched the Russell Wilson press conference uh, earlier today, and uh, it just reminded me of this other guy you really like to talk about. You know anybody named LeBron James? I think he uh, plays in L.A. over there, right? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Let me just play this sound bite real quick and uh, see if I can freshen up your memory about a thing LeBron James said. Yeah, my goal is to play 10 and 12 more years and hopefully win three to four more Super Bowls. Okay, that was Russell Wilson's quote. He wants to win three to four more Super Bowls in 10 years. Now let's listen to what LeBron said. But we also know you three kings came down here to win championships. Not one, championships. Not two. LeBron, tell us about that. Not two, not three, not four, not five, not six. So he believed it though, bro. He believed it. He believed it, which was really important. But the fact of the matter is, is basketball is a lot easier than football, in my opinion. It's hard to get to a Super Bowl. It's hard to even make the playoffs most years, and now you're in the toughest division in all of football. I think, and this is me planting my flag in the ground, Russell Wilson will not, I repeat, he will not win a Super Bowl in Denver. What do you think about that? I would say that experience outweighs everything. I completely disagree with you on this. I think Russell Wilson, he may not win four. And he may not win all three with the Denver Broncos. But I think when it's all said and done, he'll have four Super Bowls before he retires. I don't know. It's just hard to say. I mean, they're in the toughest division in football. You got the trio of Derek Carr, Darren Waller, and Devontae Adams to worry about. 
And I know this Denver defense is revamped a little bit, and I know they're pretty good. But you also got to think the Raiders just signed Chandler Jones, one of the best sackers in all of football. Stone Cold Stanley Jones. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And then... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then you got the Kansas City Chiefs. And I don't know. They, they've been to the Super Bowl a couple times. Uh, I think they're pretty good. But they're they're definitely on the downswing. They've been really quiet this offseason. Haven't really done much. Uh, they need to improve the running game for sure. Uh, and then you got the Los Angeles Chargers, who could very well be the best team in this division next year. They just went out and got a lot of defensive players signed. Khalil Mack being at the top of that list. And uh, their offense is just as good as it was last year, and it could be better now that they got another year under the belt. Uh, Russell Wilson... He's got a first-year team. I don't think they're going to be that good next year. Uh, I think they'll be maybe 10-7 uh, and seven when it's all said and done. Uh, Jerry Judy and uh, Cortland Sutton got to prove they can play together healthy at the same time. That's my big deal. Tim Patrick, he's a good pickup or a good uh, receiver. KJ Hamler, rookie last he year. He's a good pickup. Yeah. He's a good pickup. Both of those guys in fantasy. If you need somebody on the fly... Every week gets you, you know, seven to fifteen points. Both of them will get you those points. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Uh, it's, I this will definitely be good for fantasy players. Let's just put that out there. This franchise is just not set up for a Super Bowl this year. They got to get more acquainted, and we'll see some preseason. We'll see some. Uh, uh, preseason games with everybody together, but as of right now, I'm just not sold on it. But since we're talking about the AFC West, let's uh, go ahead and bring up the big trade that just shocked the world Thursday. Devontae Adams to the Raiders. What's your thoughts? Devontae Adams is playing with his best friend, Derek Carr. It's an ideal situation. It's Vegas. Devontae Adams is a small-town guy. He's not going to get caught up in the city lights. He's going to put the nose to the grindstone and earn that $230 million. And he's going to do everything he can to get the Raiders to the Super Bowl. It's tough sled. They have a less better chance than the Broncos to win the Super Bowl. I, I, I disagree completely. But, okay, so I, I had this video out on my YouTube channel. Uh, I'll drop that uh, link in the description. Um... Uh, but what, who do you think's the best trio in the AFC West out of those four teams? What do you think? Rank them. I honestly think, okay, rank them. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think Russell Wilson and his four receivers, let's just put it that way. I know you said three. Yeah. But his four receivers, if they all stay healthy and – he, they don't get thrown in the middle of the field to get, you know, bushwhacked and just knocked unconscious or go, somebody going after their knees because he's throwing it too high. That's what Drew Locke was doing all last year. Oh, yeah. I mean... He's bad about that. Russell Wilson is is, is professional. I mean, he's not going to... I think they might be the number one. And then second, you got Patrick Mahomes, Kelsey and Hill. And they the Raiders are definitely third, and Justin Herbert hasn't proven to me. I don't know why everybody's so high on Justin Herbert. I see a lot of frantic, unthought-out decisions went with him. I, he has a great arm. He's he's good. He reminds me of a mobile Joe Flacco. Yeah, I, I can definitely see that. Uh, there was points in times last year where I was watching, and I was just like, and this guy just needs to slow down just a little bit. Sit in the pocket, make more accurate and precise decisions. But I disagree with you on your uh, list. I uh, chose Devontae Adams, Darren Waller, and Derek Carr as my top trio in the uh, AFC West. For the main reason being, Devontae Adams is just that damn good, man. And he makes everyone around him better. He's made Aaron Rodgers look good for a long time. Or did Aaron Rodgers make him look good? <sighs> I don't know. You know how I feel about Aaron Rodgers. And I wish we could 
talk about him a little bit more, but uh, he made him look good, especially the last two years. Those MVP trophies are looking pretty good on the shelf. I think Devontae Adams should have got one of those. However, number two is going to shock you, and it's not Kansas City. It's the Chargers. They got the best offensive core. They got the best offensive depth out of all these teams. Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Austin Eckler. Those young core players are just head over heels better than anything Denver has right now. Anything Kansas City has right now. Clyde edwards Zaire, he's a joke. I got number three, Kansas City. Uh, I just think Travis Kelsey's getting a little older. I think he's going to slow his step a little bit, if not this year, maybe the following year. Um, I mean, don't stay away from him in fantasy, but don't draft him in, like, the first round. Right. Like, just right. So. Yeah. Uh, and Tyree Kill, he just got a big contract extension, and we've seen some players, when they get paid, their pockets get a little heavy, and they just don't move the same for some reason. <laughs> uh, I, I I'm, also too. He does. He does get double coverage. Yeah, he gets double coverage. Uh, now, be something we talk about when we talk about some free agency signings that might open up some other players. Uh, but yeah, that my final thoughts on this AFC West though is is uh, I think the Denver Broncos are the worst of those trios that I just mentioned. Um, so. I think they got a lot of work to do this offseason, and I'll be excited to watch almost every AFC West game. I hope a lot of them are on Fox this year. <laughs> However, we got some other big news to talk about here, and I'm going to just pair these two together because they got traded to the same team. Amari Cooper, Deshaun Watson, what's your thoughts on those trades? I am excited for Amari Cooper. And to be honest with you, uh, I'm happy for Deshaun Watson. I mean, if he um, can prove himself that he's matured and everything, Cleveland's the best place to do it. A real hard, you know, hardworking city, you know, people that want to get, you know, the job done and they love their Browns. Um, I will say that he couldn't have asked for a better situation. I mean, Amari Cooper hasn't lost a step, in my opinion. He was the best receiver on the Cowboys last year. Why they released, I mean, uh, traded him. And the Ravens didn't offer better. Like, nobody could have offered the Cowboys a better offer. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Was, that, that makes me think nobody's even, like, uh, call, or asking about it. Like, nobody's even picked up the phone. The Ravens have made three offensive, or off-season moves. <laughs> Dude, like, I, yeah. Like, yeah, I... When I saw the trade, first when I saw this, the breaking news part, like when I didn't see the trade details yet, I wasn't really that mad because I did agree that like Cowboys needed to free up some cap space. They needed to drop a player. I was hoping it was going to be Zeke, but they still owe him too much money right now. That'll probably be in a year or two. But I wasn't that surprised until I saw what they gave up for him. Fifth, sixth round pick. That's just unacceptable. Like, you're talking about a maybe top 10, top 12 wide receiver in the league getting paid for a fifth and sixth round pick. Unless Jerry Jones somehow knows something that we don't. Maybe he is is getting older, a previous injury is nagging him. Maybe we don't know something. But unless we, that is the case, that the uh, Cowboys got wrong. Yeah, and I I think the main reason why, and we're seeing a trend, I mean, the last few years, just like these uh, news outlets just shoot out all this stuff and they'll be like, okay, Amari Cooper's available. Well, what do you think another GM's going to think when he sees that? Like, oh, they want to get rid of him. Why would I give him a third round pick? You know what I mean? So... When it comes to that, it's like, who's going to give me the best offer, but not really the best offer, just enough to say, okay, well, we'll just take that. They're settling, and then they shouldn't be doing that. Um, But, yeah, uh, 
I was real disappointed in that trade, but I think Amari Cooper is going to be great. He's like, he's like a cheaper version of Julio Jones, like in a way. Uh, they both play similar. Both coming from Alabama, they got those big bodies, and they both hardly ever drop passes. So uh, that's one thing I like about Amari Cooper, and this will be the first time in a while he's the sole number one wide receiver. He doesn't have anybody to worry about taking targets from him. He's going to be the guy. And I think Deshaun Watson is the perfect uh, quarterback for him. Uh, he's a step better than Dak Prescott for sure. And I just can't wait to see this duo team up together. Um, let me talk about Deshaun Watson for a minute. What was yeah. up with that? What was up with that? Like, So he said he wasn't going to go to Cleveland. And then a day later, he signs with Cleveland. What What do you think happened? Like, the, What happened was is they guaranteed him money, number one. Number two, he wants to get to the hell away from Houston. That's the number one. That's number two. <laughs> he probably would have... He probably would have went anywhere. But well, I mean, I, well this, hold on a second, though, because I I really thought he was going to go to Atlanta. Like, a year ago when that news came out that he wanted to leave, I remember telling you, I, I said, he's going to go to the Falcons. He's from Atlanta. He was the ball boy when he was a kid for the Falcons. And then Calvin really gets suspended, and I think that's what really uh, put a sour taste in his mouth and just changed his mind. And then you had New Orleans. He wanted to stay in the South, it seemed like, because when he told Cleveland no thanks, it just seemed like he wanted to be in a South Southern team. Uh, and the Saints just seemed like they had the perfect fit. Like, they had the running back. They had the wide receiver. Like, I, I didn't understand why they... You know why? Why? Sean Payton's not there. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I don't even know who their offensive coordinator is. I mean, I'm sure we could look it up, but it's like, who's their, like who's, who's calling the plays? Who knows? Yeah. I mean, that's probably why he didn't go to the Saints, though. Yeah. Uh, all in all, though, I think this was a good move uh, for both sides, and this is another division that's going to be really fun to watch. I mean, you got Cincinnati, Baltimore, uh, what's left of the Pittsburgh Steelers, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be another defi- fun division to watch. I can't wait to see the matchups. Uh, but last but not least, and uh, I've talked about this a lot Carson Wentz to the Commanders. Commander Carson, what's your thoughts? <laughs> Commander Carson is going to take the Commanders, the We Are Commanders. You have to watch Pat McAfee show to know the rest of that. I can't copy that. that yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's really awesome the way they do that. I want to shout out to them. Yeah, really for sure, for sure. Uh, <clears throat> but Commander Carson, he is going to eventually run himself out of the league. He needs to calm down. He's nowhere near <laughs> as good as he thinks he is. And if he could just take that you know, humble pill and swallow it, get on his John Deere tractor and just relax for a second and realize he's not as good as he thinks he is, he might be something. Well, the the whole thing that just surprised me about this whole thing is the Colts traded him without a backup plan. That that right there... It was stupid, but that right there just tells you something about Carson Wentz, like... They wanted to get rid of him without a backup plan. They're like, "Oh, we'll find another guy." Like, we just don't want Carson Wentz anymore. Like, that's saying something. If you're an NFL franchise wanting to have a quarterback on your team, this guy's the leader of your team, and they were just dumb with him. But I got a different take on this. Uh, fantasy wise, I think this is a great fit. Uh, I mentioned this in my video a couple uh, days ago that Carson Wentz was sixth in the league in deep ball accuracy. Okay, that means a lot when you're talking about fantasy football. Um, Look what he did for Michael Pittman last year. Michael Pittman had a career year, albeit it was his second year, but he had a career year. Um, 
And for a while, everybody was thinking Jimmy G was going to be the next quarterback of the Colts. And honestly, let me hear what you think about this, but honestly, Jimmy G and Carson Wentz aren't much different. Jimmy G actually turned the ball over more than Carson Wentz last year. What's your thoughts if the Colts go for Jimmy G over Carson Wentz? If the Colts go for Jimmy G, they're going to have to completely rely on the run. And that's what the 49ers did, and that's why they were so successful. Now, is Frank Wright going to be able to change his offense to completely do that? I don't think he'd want to do that. I think he's going to want to throw the ball a little more. Yeah. And I think I think they're the same same person. But to be but, yeah, but to be fair though, the Colts don't have a Debo Samuel on their team. Nobody has a Debo Samuel on their team. Debo Samuel is one of a kind, uh, and I think that's what really made a difference for Jimmy Garoppolo last year. Uh, I think Michael Pittman's Michael fantasy. Michael Pittman is nowhere near Debo. Samuel. Yeah, I think Michael Pittman's fantasy value is going to fall flat and. People aren't going to catch on it because they're going to just look at the numbers from last year and be like, oh, he did good. But I honestly could say Michael Pittman could fall flat. And Terry McLaurin is someone you must be drafting in drafts. Uh, I think he's a top 15 receiver uh, with Carson Wentz at quarterback. What do you think? I mean, think about it this. I mean, if uh, Ron Rivera is going to – get the most out of Carson Wentz, he's going to have to, you know, slow him down a little bit. They're going to have to throw more screen passes. Terry, Scary Terry, is a really good yak player. So, if anything, he's going to be, you could get him and get the same kind of production you would get for, like, DeFonte Adams last year. And you could draft him a little, maybe in the second round, versus drafting Devontae Adams the third overall. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. But what do you guys think? Go ahead and drop in the comments. Uh, Tell us what you think about uh, the duo of Deshaun Watson and Amari Cooper. Tell us what you think about our little argument about the AFC West and who's the best trio. Uh, Is Commander Carson going to be what the commanders need? Let us know in the comments section. Now we're moving on to the big free agent moves, and there's a lot of them. We're going to go over the spending spree that the Jacksonville Jaguars made by signing Christian Kirk. Uh, He had a $72 million four-year deal with a $10 million incentive, so he could be making up to $84 million when it's all said and done. I think this is just a terrible... Signing is a classic Jaguars uh, move. But uh, tell me what you think about what the Jaguars did this offseason so far. I think that the city of Jacksonville should issue a warrant for Christian Kirk's arrest. Because <laughs> he straight stole from the Jacksonville Jaguars. I can't believe that that was that's a thing. I just want to bring this up. There's a lot of free agents that were out there right now, right? They could have paid three of the players that were in free agency the same amount, and Trevor Lawrence would be so much better off. Yeah, uh, I agree with you. Like, they're like they could have easily just brought back DJ Chark. Like, aren't they like basically the same player? Like, it's it's, it's crazy. Christian Kirk. Uh, I'm not. I, I think people are gonna draft him a little high because they think, oh, he's finally the number one receiver. But guess what? He was the number one receiver most of last year because DeAndre Hopkins missed a lot of games. Uh, I know targets mean a lot in pro football when you're talking about fantasy, but guys, Christian Kirk's not good. He's been in the league for four to five years now, and he's never had a thousand yard year. Not once. Not once. And you think he's going to be a number one receiver to a franchise that has a young quarterback like Trevor Lawrence who needs someone to rely on? New offensive coordinator. New offensive coordinator, new head coach. Uh, I don't see it. But there was one move I was excited about in Jacksonville, and 
I think this guy's career is going to resurrect a little bit. Evan Ingram. Um, he was with the New York Giants for five seasons. He was a pro bowler in 2020. Uh, he's had some injuries that kind of slowed him down a little bit, but the reason why I'm so excited about him is uh, Trevor Lawrence just loved throwing the tight ends last year. Every, every tight end that was on the field uh, got a little boost because of Trevor Lawrence. Tell me what you think about Evan Ingram going to Jacksonville. If he could stay healthy, he would be a really, really good asset to Trevor Lawrence. And when I say healthy, I mean in, in multiple ways. Number one, if he, if he goes to Jacksonville and Trevor Lawrence is throwing behind him to where he's got to contort his body backwards to expose himself to these big hits, he's not going to want to save it. And that's what happened in New, in New York. I, think. I don't think he was actually hurt. I think he said, you know what, screw this, dude. I don't want to play with this dude. And I don't want that to happen to Trevor Lawrence. So he, you know, they have to work together and hopefully they can develop some chemistry. If they do, it's going to be really scary because Trevor Lawrence is only going to get better as long as he's got people around him that support him. And that's one point I kind of just want to point out is, like, I think everybody's just a little too impatient. We want it now in most aspects, when it, especially when it comes to fantasy football. But Trevor Lawrence, he's going to get there. I don't know if Christian Kirk's the answer. I doubt it. But uh, there's another signing in Jacksonville that was just terrible. I think, like you said, there should be another warrant out for this guy. He got paid a three-year contract, $24 million off of one game. Zay Jones. Uh, nobody even knew who this guy was. And now he's a millionaire off of one game. Tell me what you think about Zay Jones getting a $24 million deal. I don't even know who that is. So. <laughs> yeah, well, he was with the Raiders. He was with oh, okay. he was with the Raiders last year, and uh, when the Raiders, I think they were playing the Colts, and uh, Zay Jones had like a hundred plus yard game and like twenty plus fantasy points with like two touchdowns. And uh, other than that, his highest point total was like twelve for fantasy points. Uh, the only other game he had a decent game, and all his other games were single digit points. Uh, I really don't see how he's going to work out with this uh, Jacksonville team. Uh, I looked at the ESPN depth chart, and they had him as the number three wide receiver when I, I completely disagree. I think LaVisca Chenault's a way better fantasy player, right, right, a way better football player than Zay Jones. But enough about Jacksonville because it's just going to get me mad. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and move on to someone who was in Jacksonville, but now – has found a new home in Detroit. DJ Chart. Do you think he'll fit with the Monse Brown and Jerry Goff? Then he better because they're <laughs> not going to have anybody else to pass the ball to. Yeah, their third receiver is Josh Reynolds. and He's all right, but I think DJ Chart to Detroit is going to be uh, something explosive for this uh, offense. Uh, it's just going to be another way to get, like, uh, DeAndre Swift involved. If you got two big deep threats down the field, which Jared Goff hasn't really been known to be a good deep threat uh, passer, but you get these deep threats down the field, and then you're just going to have the middle of the field wide open for guys like TJ Hawkinson and DeAndre Swift. Uh, I can really see that being an impact for Detroit, and I think they're on the rise. I think they're going to be making some moves in the draft that's going to surprise some people, and uh, I think they're doing something over there. What do you think? I think that they're going to gnaw at the kneecaps of everybody in the NFL until they go 6 and 10. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't want to get too much into that, but uh, let's go ahead and talk about two other signings that I think are a big deal. Uh, they're not going to be on new teams, but it's Arizona Cardinals have re-signed both James Conner and uh, Zach Ertz after letting Chase Edmonds go to Miami. Do uh, you think uh, J James Conner can repeat his big year from last year? 
I have a question for you. What? So, is Kyler Murray following the Cardinals on Instagram still? Uh, last I checked, he's not. Oh, he's not? Or, okay. So yeah, he's, he's not. Deal, right? Yeah, he's not. No. Okay. <laughs> he, no. Yeah, he took down no. all his pictures. He's, uh, he's starting over. Did he post them up again, though? Or? Uh, no, no, no. He, he, yeah, he's done. Yeah. In all seriousness, no. Uh, but James Conner's a good running back. Uh, Zach Hurts, he's in the moonlight of his career, right? He's at the end. Right. Um, I think that if Kyler Murray is 100% there mentally and physically and ready to win, that division is more open than it was last year. Especially if Jimmy G goes elsewhere, and you know, um, you know, God forbid, uh, Trey Lance is a bad, you know, bust, right? Right. Uh, so <laughs> he. Uh, no Russell Wilson either. Yeah. So. No Russell Wilson. So, I mean, they have a lot. Uh, they have a lot of good stuff going for them. So. Yeah, and uh, I just want to take a note here too. I mean. Christian Kirk's not there anymore, so it's going to bring more value into guys like uh, Anton Wesley, who kind of broke out at the end of the year last year, the wide receiver for the Cardinals. He had a couple of good games in a row. Uh, Rondell Moore, who everybody was hyped about in the offseason, is being the next big thing. We'll see if he can do it now that he don't have to worry about This is a good year to stash Rondell Jones, for sure. Yeah. and uh, If you get a chance to, stash it. Yeah, and... Uh, this could be a resurgence for DeAndre Hopkins, too. I mean, he basically had half the year off. And I think he's going to be 100% healthy, and I think people are going to uh, kind of sleep on him a little bit. Not as much as, like, everyone thinks, but, I mean, I think he won't be as drafted as high as he usually is. So that will be something interesting to keep an eye on as we start preparing for our drafts. But let's go ahead and move on to... Mitchell Trubisky. And I know you love talking about the Steelers. Mitch Bird. Mitch Bird. Yeah, I know, I know, I know you love uh, talking about Pittsburgh. That's like your favorite team to talk about. <laughs> nah, he loves Baltimore. No yeah, he loves Baltimore. No comment. No comment. Um, this is the best thing that's ever happened to me football-wise. I just want to show that. <laughs> Was it a one-year deal or a two-year deal? doesn't matter it's gonna be hilarious yeah and i'm sure it'll just end up being a one-year deal when it's all said and done but well no i mean mitch trubisky he has a lot of good qualities right he is going to do things better than dwayne haskins oh he, yeah he has an accurate arm the thing with mitch trubisky is he hasn't decided if he wants to be a pocket passer or a scrambler He's like stuck in the middle. He is. He doesn't know what he, what he wants to do yet. If he can figure that out in Pittsburgh, they may end up being okay. But you, you think he Brown's learned anything? Stuff. You think he learned anything from Brian Dable or uh, Josh Allen in his time in Buffalo? Yeah, he should have. He was on the bench. Yeah, he should have been. <laughs> I mean, that's attention. why you that's why you get put on the bench is to learn. Right. And if he if he wants to progress his NFL career. He better have learned something, you know? Yeah. Uh, I want to touch on the offensive weapons. Uh, we've had this discussion off uh, this uh, show, but uh, Deontay Johnson, uh, Chase Claypool, Najee Harris, those are the best weapons he's ever had. And I think he's going to thrive in this system. What do you think? The Ravens fan in me wants all of them to not play well. <laughs> but in all seriousness, Najee Harris may be a top three pick. It should, I think he should be. Uh, we may be talking first overall because as of now, we don't know the status of Christian McCaffrey and we don't know who the quarterback he was even going to be for the Carolina Panthers. I mean, he, he might go first overall. You said a bad uh, word on this YouTube channel. I did. Christian McCaffrey is a bad word. He's like that pretty girl that you love to spend your money on. 
And whenever it's time to get down to business, she just disappears. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. And then you got freaking Deontay Johnson, who, if he can get open, he's good. But he has a hard time separating. Now, keep in mind, he is getting older and he's getting better. So, yeah, I, I think he would be a good second-round pick as far as fantasy concerned. Me, personally, I have a strict rule never to draft a Steelers player. I drafted Najee Harris last year, and I traded him. I shouldn't. You traded him to me. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to just have him on my team. Um, I hope I don't pick first overall <laughs> this year. I should, though. I think I have the worst record. Well, I think... I'll kind of combat your statement there just for a second. Najee Harris is going to be good. I'm not saying don't draft him or anything, but since you don't have Big Ben Noodle Arm anymore, uh, I think he's not going to be catching the ball as much as he was because there was some games where he was seeing like 10-plus targets. Uh, I don't think Trubisky is going to do that. I, I, I think you're going to see more. From Deontay Johnson this year. Pat Fryer moves to tight end. Uh, Claypool is going to be a really good red zone th- uh, threat for them. But yeah, what what is your thoughts on that? I mean, you're going to have a guy that can get it down the field more. Uh, that's plain and simple. He might not be accurate like everybody if he wants. Can stay, if he can stay up, yeah. that's the biggest problem. You know, the Steelers' offensive line isn't that good. No, it's not. Um, and that's why... I think that there's going to be, you know, more screens to Najee Harris, uh, stuff to get, you know, Mitch Trubisky going, like stuff to give him confidence every game. I mean, Mike Tomlin, once again, I mean, I have the utmost respect for the Steelers. I just don't like them because I'm a Ravens fan. Right. <laughs> but, I mean, like, Mike Tomlin's one of the best coaches in the uh, NFL. Yeah. Uh, he'll find a way to make Mitch Trubisky good, hopefully. And uh, one last note. Uh I really don't understand why they didn't give Dwayne Haskins a chance. I mean, I guess it's just some of his off-field problems. He can't really be trusted. But uh, he looked really good in the preseason. Like, I was actually excited. I watched a few of his, the Steelers games just because of the people they were playing against, and I wanted to watch the players play. But uh, he, he looked really good. Uh, I was surprised that they didn't give him a shot. But one last question. Do you think... If Mr. Trubisky's available uh, and you need a third quarterback, because we play those two quarterback leagues sometimes, would you take Mr. Trubisky as your third quarterback? No. <clears throat> and besides my rule, this is why <laughs> I wouldn't take him. Uh, <clears throat> I wouldn't take him because he is not consistent. He doesn't. He he can win games without scoring fantasy points. If that makes any sense. Oh yeah. I just don't. I don't trust him. Um, as far as fantasy is concerned, um, as far as like NFL quarterback, he's better than some of the other quarterbacks that are in the NFL starting. We'll yeah. Say that. Yeah. I mean, he's better than Zach Wilson. He's better than Sam Darnold because hypothetically he's the Panthers starting quarterback. Like he's better than others, but he's not. You know, he's not going to get you a championship. So they're wasting their time. For sure, for sure. Uh, And last on this list, but definitely not least, there's a lot more we could have talked about here, but Allen Robinson, I think he's the steal of the uh, offseason so far because I honestly did not think he was going to go to the Rams. The Rams, honestly... Uh, you know the statement, the rich got richer? Well, that's exactly what happened here. Uh, what's your thoughts on Allen Robinson going to the Rams? Allen Robinson is finally going to have a quarterback other than Blake Portals for one year. Um, Mr. Trubisky. <laughs> yeah. I mean, other, I mean, he's had an okay quarterback. He's never had a great quarterback. Matthew Stafford's a great quarterback. Um, the only thing is, it's just like all these super teams in the NBA, right? Like, there's too many mountains. So, I wouldn't go so high on the person. No, I wouldn't either. Uh, I just kind of want to know, like, what it means for guys like uh, Van Jefferson. Uh, 
we don't really have to worry about Robert Woods anymore. He just got traded to the Titans, I believe, yesterday. So uh, the main thing here is, is, is he going to be what Robert Woods was for Cooper Cup? Or is he going to be more of like what A.J. Green was for the Cardinals last year? That's kind of like the toss-up we're going to have uh, when we're thinking about Allen Robinson. He's still well, pretty young. You also got to think about – you know, hypothetically OBJ, right? Right. Um, and then you also have to think that, okay, well, maybe um, they can all play each other's positions. You know, Sean McVay is really smart. Maybe he can – they don't run a very complicated playbook. Right. And I, know, I think so. this is – this signing is also about maybe taking a little bit of the workload off of Cooper Cup because uh, I don't think they're going to have him in the slot as much next year because they want to – keep them and have them last a little bit longer in the league. Um, and I think Allen Robinson could take some of that uh, uh, workload from him. One, one thing I will bring up, uh, Whitworth retired. They don't have a left tackle. Right. So just keep that in mind, you know? Yeah, so they're going to be having to just, like, drop it real fast. There's not going to be any time to wait. They're just going to have to let that ball out. And hopefully Robert, Alan Robinson is one of the ones catching it. But, uh, yeah, drop in the comment section. What do you guys think? Uh, who's a big free agent move that uh, maybe we didn't bring up? Or who are you excited about uh, going to a certain team? Let us know in the comment section. But before we leave, is there anyone I didn't mention that you would like to bring up real quick? Yes, because you've taken your shots at me. Um, about the Ravens, so I'm going to take a shot at your Cowboys. Oh, God. Okay. So, look, Randy Gregory or uh, Fowler? Who do you got? Who's the best? Uh, <laughs> I really don't understand what happened there. It's not our fault that he changed his mind last minute. Maybe we would have had like another $10 million. Maybe he would have stayed. I don't know. Maybe and we should. You lose your left tackle, and they go to the Bengals, the team that was in the Super Bowl. What did they need? Guess what? A tackle. A tackle. So now yeah. the AFC North is stacked, and the Cowboys just could have spent a little money. You know, like Jerry Jones being stingy. Yeah, honestly, that uh, NFC West division or NFC East division is like completely like open. Like anyone can win it right now. I think the Cowboys got a lot worse this off season. But uh, yeah, bold, pre bold prediction: NFC East Eagles. It hurts me to say this, but I think I'd be taking the Commanders over anyone in that division. But you can't forget about the Giants. Ryan Dable, first-year head coach. Uh, I, re I read an article on Facebook, which doesn't really hold much weight, but I read an article on Facebook that uh, the title was, Could Brian Dable Turn Daniel Jones Into the Next Josh Allen? That's scary. Yeah, because he is fast. He is fast. He is really fast. Yeah. But to even like put those two players' names in the same sentence is kind of... But Josh Allen is also an alpha male specimen. He's yeah. 230-something pounds, and he can run a freaking 4 5 four. Right. Come on. Yeah. That's that's not even fair. That's like yeah. a player you make on that. Yeah, that's I not... I don't even make my quarterback 6'7 on that. Yeah. Because I know, like, that's not even realistic. I've always said, I've always said Josh Allen is if Cam Newton and uh, Ben Roethlisberger had a baby. He's good. It's yeah. really good. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's go ahead and move on. And we got a special segment for you here. So we got a new segment. Uh, rapid fire predictions. Uh, we got five quarterbacks, five pass catchers, and five running backs that we're going to tell you where they should go. These guys are still available. Some of them aren't free agents, but they are up for trade. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to get right into it. Uh, first on the list, and I'll go first, Baker Mayfield. I think he's going to the Colts. Uh, he's definitely going to be out of Cleveland, uh, and the Colts need a quarterback, and they've been looking for a quarterback that's going to be there longer than one season. They had Phillip Rivers one year. They had uh, Carson Wentz one year, and before that they had Jacoby Brissett for one year. 
uh, they need somebody that's stable. And I've always called Baker Mayfield the poor man version of Kirk Cousins. And, and then him and Case Keenum are right there. <laughs> and I, I think the Colts should sign or trade for Baker Mayfield. What do you think? I want to know if Baker Mayfield has to give his keys to Chris and what he moves out. <laughs> I'm sure uh, um, I'm sure he will he uh, Baker Mayfield will leave in Cleveland uh, I think the Colts would be a good destination but I also think that Seattle would be a great destination see I didn't even think about them uh, or can I shock the world maybe he goes to the Jets I didn't think about that either uh, those would both be very interesting spots because we all know what Baker Mayfield's best at. He's best at spreading the ball around. He don't show love to no one in particular, and that's what I liked about him his first few years in the league, and I hope he gets a fresh start somewhere. Hopefully it's in uh, Indianapolis, but as of right now, we'll just have to wait and see. I'm sure we'll be finding that out here pretty soon. Now we move on to Jimmy Garoppolo. And I'll let you take this one first. Jimmy Garoppolo to the Colts makes the most sense to me just because he knows how to manage the game. He is a less accurate version and a less confident version of Tom Brady. The Colts would be a perfect fit. Yeah, I'm going to take it one further. Same division, different team. Uh, I think he's going to go to the Houston Texans. Nick Casario's there. He worked for the Patriots. Uh, I really just see that connection. They got the draft capital to do it. I think they would offer more than anybody else would. Uh, and I just think it would be a great fit. You still got Brandon Cooks there. Uh, that's the number one wide receiver in the league. Uh, I think that would be the quickest way for them to enter the win now mode is that they have Jimmy G because all he does is win. Do you think that they are going to give more than the Browns gave for Amari Cooper? <laughs> hey, <laughs> we did talk about that. I mean, everyone knows he's available and uh, he's got the bum shoulder. Can he still, I mean, he can't throw that deep right now anyway, but. Is this shoulder surgery going to improve his shoulder or is it going to make it worse? That's the main situation. Uh, and that might take some time for people. All, all together, he could just stay in uh, San Francisco for one more year. But anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Matt Ryan. Does he stay or does he go? Should I stay or should I go? <laughs> uh, no, Matt Ryan is in a really peculiar situation. On one hand, he probably has his kids and everything in Atlanta, but they did kind of just disrespect him. He's not a bad quarterback. He's just on a bad right. team. Exactly. Um, I just think that uh, him to the Texans would make the most sense to me. Um, if they really wanted to change their change their identity and they wanted to keep going, Houston would be a real good place for Matt Ryan. I agree, uh, but I'm going to take it another route. I think that the Seahawks should trade for Matt Ryan. You already got two solidified wide receivers on, on your team, and all they need is a quarterback – and they could easily make the playoffs with Matt Ryan at quarterback. And I think with his experience, not to say that Russ didn't bring out their full potential, but I think with his experience, he's thrown to guys like Julio Jones, uh, Steven Ridley, uh, just to name a few, Tony Gonzalez. I think he could bring the most out of those players because he could see the potential in them that they don't even know that they got. I think Seattle would be a perfect fit for Matt Ryan. And Will Disley is still fantasy relevant. Yes. <laughs> and 
The reason why I have him on this list is I know he uh, isn't a free agent. He's a trade candidate. But they have till Tuesday before they got to pay him a, a contract. So uh, they got to make this decision pretty quick. So hopefully we can hear this yeah, news. Matt Ryan, uh, that's another disrespectful thing they did. Oh, we're not going to give you your bonus until Tuesday. What yeah. Is our, what is, well, screw that, dude. Well, yeah, well, they were supposed to give it to him on Friday, but they extended it to Tuesday because they thought they were going to get Deshaun Watson. When it was beneficial for them. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. So... That's something that uh, we just got to wait and watch. Uh, I, uh, I'm really interested to see what happens there. And now we move on to Jameis Winston. Famous Jameis. Where do you think he's going to go? Honestly, it's in his best interest to stay in uh, New Orleans. I mean, that's his best, that's his best shot. Um, but I could see him being a big name backup that somebody brings in. Um, somebody that doesn't want to you know if they if they lose their star quarterback or if they have a rookie that gets hurt um, maybe you know he would be a great backup uh, kind of like a uh, Jacoby Brissett deal you know um, the best place for him to go would be probably New Orleans I got a fire starter for you and I know this is a pretty far out thing that could happen but I think the Pittsburgh Steelers should sign Jameis Winston. Mainly because it will put a little fire under Mr. Trubisky. And everyone loves a quarterback competition. They're, they'll both be on one-year deals. I think that would be the best move the Steelers can make is to have a security blanket just in case Mitch shits the bed. What do you think? I think that Jameis Winston's a better quarterback than Mr. Trubisky, honestly. So, All right. Uh, <laughs> that wouldn't be good if he went. I think uh, Mike Tomlin get, would get a lot of his scrambling abilities out of him. Um, I just hope he does not go to the Steelers. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's pretty... Lead, he yeah. led the league in touchdowns. And interceptions in the same year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, passing yards and interceptions. I'm still waiting on that ESPN 30 for 30 show for Jameis Winston because he went 30 for 30. Right. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's definitely far out there. It's probably not that realistic, but I would love to see it. Uh, and last on the list, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Where do you think he should go? I think he should go back to the Canadian football, or sorry, go to the Canadian football league and win a championship there. I think that would be the ultimate Ryan Fitzpatrick move. <laughs> yeah. This man went to Harvard and he's played for half the NFL. He has lived his best life. Oh yeah, he has for sure. My my opinion on this is I think he should just retire. But if I had to pick a team, I think he should. Uh, dang, this is hard. I think the Carolina Panthers should take a shot at him. I mean, yeah, Has they're. Has he played for the Panthers yet? No, he hasn't. <laughs> that would be perfect. He could ride off in the sunset like Jake DeLone. Yeah, I mean, because they're going to be paying Sam Darnold anyway. Uh, so I think Fitzpatrick would be. A pretty logical fit. You wouldn't have to pay him too much money to go over there for just one season, and then. Uh, and if some bitch magic happens with Christian McCaffrey, that would be dangerous. Talk oh yeah. Out. Yeah, it would be very dangerous. Christian McCaffrey. You got uh, DJ Moore who just signed a big extension, and uh, Robbie Anderson. I think he's on the team still, so uh, that'd be a good deep threat for Fitzpatrick. So I'd pay to see that. Uh, now we're moving on to wide receivers. Julio Jones sits at the top of the list, and I kind of think I know where you're going to go with this, but where do you think he's going to go? The Charm City. He needs to come to the Ravens. He needs to play the route runner role 
not the deep threat role and prove how tough he is come back home to Baltimore. I could see that happening. They just kind of fumbled on a couple guys, man. Like you were saying earlier, like they couldn't give a fifth and sixth uh, for Amari Cooper. But the Ravens do treasure their draft picks more than most franchises do, though. I will give them that. They always trade back. Yeah. They always trade their draft picks back. Yeah. That's yeah, that's weird. But uh, I think Julio Jones, and this might surprise you, I think Julio Jones should sign with the Dallas Cowboys. Be a perfect replacement for Amari Cooper, and you probably wouldn't have to pay him as much as you were paying Amari. They're almost the exact same players. Certainly, at this stage in Julio's career, I think they're very similar. Uh, what's your thoughts? <laughs> oh, man, that would be the Cowboys thing to do inside. And not to forget... Uh, he was caught a he was caught a couple years ago wearing a Cowboys hoodie. Remember that? He should have went to Dallas a couple years ago. If he would have went to Dallas a couple years ago, uh, with Amari Cooper still doing better, you know, I mean, like I said, he's still a good receiver, but I think Julio Jones would be a less expensive the option for sure for Dallas. But. We can't forget to just mention the big teams. This is just where we think he's going to go, but I think the favorites and most logical is either Green Bay or Tampa Bay. But you never know. One of these teams that we just mentioned could take a stab at them, and I'd really like to see that. Now we move on to Mr. Antonio Brown. What's your thoughts on this? Does anyone even gonna give him a chance, or do you think he's just damaged goods and lost cost? I think Antonio Brown is a really, really mentally challenged person. Yeah. And I think that it's not his fault that he is the way he is, but he is that person, and you can't trust him. I wouldn't give him money to play in the NFL right now. He's making too much money on his rap record. But he, that's right um yeah it's kind of hard for me to say any nfl team should give him money just to hope that he doesn't ruin it somehow but yeah it's really hard to say anybody should sign him (laughs) uh if i had to pick one team though i think if he was willing to take like a really low deal like a $3 $3 million deal or like veteran minimum deal. I wouldn't mind to see him sign with the Buffalo Bills. That'd be scary. That'd be really scary. And but, uh, to, and to take, it even, take it even, take it even. Oh yeah, go ahead. Buffalo Bills, they're a really tight-knit group. Yeah. I don't think that'd be, you know, that wouldn't be a good idea. But and Buffalo does know that, that'd be stupid. But... He would keep his shoulder pads and shirt on because it's pretty damn cold over there. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's true. Uh, yeah, it's really hard to say. I think I agree with you on this one. Uh, I don't think anyone should sign him. Even if like someone was to lose their number one, I wouldn't even take a chance on him. But someone will. Surprising. Believe it or not, someone will. Probably Seattle. Yeah, I was thinking maybe New Orleans might do it too. Maybe. But anyway, uh, next on the list, Odo Beckham Jr. Who you got? It makes the most sense for him because he helped them win a Super Bowl to go back to the Rams. Um, But at the end of the day, uh, Odell's a shell of himself. Uh, he's been more uh, focused on other things than football and shows. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm not going to pick the Rams, though. I'm going to pick, and this might shock you, I think he'll end up signing with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers by the middle of the season when we see him uh, running on the field again. I think that's the best fit for him right now. 
All right, is he completely done with the Rams? Like, he, uh, he's not on the Rams right now. Yeah, he's not on the Rams right now at all. Uh, he's a free agent. I think he's going to Tampa Bay. That'd be nuts, too. Pay him exactly what you paid Antonio Brown to win a Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then uh, next on the list, this isn't a wide receiver, but since we just got through talking about the Bucks, I think the next person we should be discussing is Rob Gronkowski. We kind of talked about him a little while ago, uh, but where would you like to see him land? Him and Tom Brady are the best of friends. Um, they are always going to be you know playing together but crazy thing that i think may happen and this is where i would really like him to go would be to uh the broncos i would love to see him and russell wilson win a super bowl for that city because uh, i think that that makes the most sense they lost noah fan they can offer him 20 million dollars for two years and he can retire after that. See, I think some, like, average team that has a lot of cap space is just going to throw some money at them. Uh, Maybe Indianapolis, if they can find a quarterback. Yeah, that's where I was going with this. I think the Colts are going to be the team that signs Gronk just because they got the cap space to do it. And if they get someone like Baker or Jimmy G... They need a solid tight end because they can't throw as deep as some of these other players can. So, yeah, I'd be uh, interested to see Gronk as a Colt. And last but not least, for the pass catchers, we got Jarvis Landry. Where do you think he's going to land? I could see him being petty, and I really think this would help out their receiving core. Um, and this isn't because I'm a Ravens fan. It's because I think that would be a way for him to say, you know, screw you to the Browns. I mean, the Ravens got a lot of people coming back. Y'all forget, we're playing, we're playing on like eight string people last year. Yeah, that was um, crazy. And Jarvis Landry would make a great addition to our team. It's probably not going to happen. He's probably going to end up um, signing big money with a lower team, kind of how he did in Cleveland. Yep. Um, and that's that's probably what's going to happen. Do you think he uh, would have any interest in returning to Miami? No. Nah, um, I don't think that NFL players view to a, in high regard. Uh, so, I, I mean, Miami is going to be a decent team. Um, the dumbest thing they ever did was firing uh, Brian Forrest. Yeah. I agree. Uh, If I had to pick one team for him to go to, I think he's going to sign with the Arizona Cardinals. They just lost Christian Kirk. They just lost uh, A.J. Green to free agency. I mean, they could still re-sign him, but uh, I think they would rather have someone like Jarvis Landry. Jarvis Landry is an upgrade to A.J. Green. Yeah, I think Jarvis Landry would uh, pair well with uh, D-Hop because they do the exact opposite things. D-Hop is a big yard catcher and Jarvis Landry is one of those short field guys that just gets you about five, 10 yards every catch. So I think that'd be well, a perfect he does, fit. He, he gets a lot of yards after carries, uh, after catches. Right? Yeah. That's what he's uh, most famous I mean, for. Yeah. I mean, but you know, in Arizona is, who knows, but in Arizona would be a really interesting thing for him to dance. Yes, sir. Let's go ahead and move on to, uh, the running backs, and I know we talked about Leonard Fournette earlier, but I just want to reiterate, uh, I think the best move for him would be to sign with the Buffalo Bills. Uh, what's your thoughts? Leonard Fournette and Tom Brady, uh, old head Brady, are mm-hmm. uh, good friends. I think he's gonna, I think it would make the most sense for him to go back to the Tampa Bay. Um, but a real dark horse for him uh, could be a team that's looking to be a two running back punt, uh, system, um, especially a team that doesn't have a quarterback. 
maybe the Colts. Yeah. Uh, try to make a make a play for him, and you could have Jonathan Taylor and Leonard Fournette, and then you could have me playing quarterback. I would like to see that. Uh, yeah. Uh, next, we got Sony Michelle. Where do you think he should go? Sony Michelle should just swallow his pride and go back to New England. Um, I think that he would be a really good fit for with Mac Jones and. Uh, he was better under Bill Belichick than he was with the Rams. I agree. Uh, yeah, he just got kind of the opportunity to just get thrown in there. And uh, he had opportunities, and that just made him look good. But I think if he ended up in New England, that'd be a pretty good fit. Uh, how about the Houston Texans? They need a running back very badly. They might draft a running back in the draft, but... This is the Lamar Miller story over again a little bit, but, I mean, Lamar Miller was better than Sonny Michelle, but, I mean, um, no, the Texans would be... That sounds like something the Texans would do under Nick Casario, and, you know, maybe they pray on it a little bit, not do all that. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, like... They they probably, yeah, they probably would do something like that. This, just real quick, this guy, Nick Casario, the, or the GM, I'm sorry, the GM from the Houston Texans, uh, will want to sit and listen to the coaches talking on the thing. The coaching and GM should be completely separate. And the Texans are doing horrible with running that uh, team right now. Yeah, it's, it's real unfortunate, but, uh, you know, we live in the Houston area and it's just like the same old song and dance over and over again. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next uh, player here, Rashad Penny. I think he's probably one of the most exciting players left available on the running back position. Uh, uh, I think uh, he is uh, resigning with the Seahawks. Oh, he is? I think so. Yeah. Well, uh, I just saw some sources. Uh, this isn't breaking. This was it. 2.55 p.m. Uh-huh. Uh, sources, uh, Seattle Seahawks agreed to a one-year deal with Rashad Penny. Oh, man. He was good, though. He was good. I was hoping he would have uh, gone to another team just because of the rust situation. Just nobody would really want to sign back over there. But, hey, good for him. I mean, he will be the number one back. And, I mean, they, they were the ones that made him famous. So, Well, uh, real quick, I uh, want to give a shout-out to... Uh, Brady Henderson of ESPN who reported that Uh, but the one thing I want to touch on with uh, Rashad Penny fantasy wise you should stash him Alex Collins and Chris Carson are the only two running backs in Seattle they're not going to be able to throw the ball that well with Drew Locke I'm sorry but 49ers defense Rams defense um, Arizona's defense that's a tough sled for Drew Locke um, but Rashad Penny has really interesting options. Is a really interesting option because if one of them get hurt, Rashad Penny is the best back, backup running back in the NFL, in my opinion. Most certainly. Uh, we uh, we definitely uh, wish him luck in Seattle. Uh, it's going to be a tough year for those guys. Hopefully uh, he has a good season. But let's go ahead and move on he- to... Melvin Gordon. I believe he's probably going to sign back with Denver. I mean, why would you not want to? Uh, he's primed for a great spot with uh, Javante Williams probably taking over. Uh, what's your thoughts on Melvin Gordon? I'm going to go with the shocker. And I'm going to say that Melvin Gordon signs with the Houston Texans. Yeah. I really think that would be the best thing they could do in free agency for the team. Uh, Melvin Gordon could go back to being the number one back again, which I think he, he is. Uh, I think that, you know, Javante Williams is just a little bit better. They're like the same exact, you know. Um, but Melvin Gordon was supposed to be the number one back. He was really good coming out of college. Uh, he has a really 
high opinion of himself, and he should. He's an animal. Yeah. So, uh, he could be the number one back in Houston, and it would make sense for both sides. I think I'd like to see him pair up with Elijah Mitchell and San Francisco. Uh, they definitely need a one-two punch over there. Most teams are going that route, the one-two punch. Uh, and I think that'd be a perfect fit because Kyle Shanahan loves running the football, and he'll get both those guys involved pretty damn quick. Uh, Melvin Gordon to San Francisco seems pretty good to me. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the last guy here. Where do you think Ronald Jones should go and free agency? I don't like Ronald Jones as far as the fantasy option. I never really have. Um, as far as where he should go, I can see him being a backup running back in Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah. I'd like to see that. Uh, I think if Leonard Fournette ends up going to the teams we discussed, I think he should sign back with Tampa Bay. I know there's a notion out there that Tom Brady doesn't like Ronald Jones. Uh, He's fumbled the ball a couple times, but when he is the starter, when he is the pure one back, he puts up good numbers. Uh, I enjoy watching him play. I would love to see him re-sign with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But what is uh is there any player you feel like I didn't mention that we should be talking about? The player that we should be mentioning that you didn't talk about that everybody really hasn't been talking about. It's weird. We need to get Lamar Jackson signed. I'm just reaching out to Ravens ownership. Give him a deal he can't refuse, and let's just lock this up so I don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> well, you know that uh, Sam, I say a lot is Patrick Mahomes is the Steph Curry of the NFL, and Lamar Jackson is the James Harden of the NFL. So I could see him wanting to leave Baltimore sooner rather than later, but let's hope that doesn't happen. Because I want to see some AFC North uh, action with the teams constructed as they are right now. I hope that that doesn't happen. Uh, <laughs> I really do. Uh, Lamar Jackson is a is a talent like you know we haven't seen except for maybe Michael Vick and uh, you know maybe Cole Pepper. Uh, he is very very tough for how fast and slender he is. Uh, and he is he's electric but the thing is is he needs certain things to happen this right way as long as it happens that way he's going to make it you know he's going to make the play but if it's off script he doesn't know what to do let's just say hypothetical let's say the ravens don't make the playoffs again this year do you think they would pick harbaugh over jackson or do you think they would put pick jackson over harbaugh as far as ticket sales go, and you know that business side of it, yeah. it makes more sense to keep Lamar Jackson. Yeah. Um, but the Ravens fan in me, um, I'm more loyal to Harbaugh than I am to Lamar. Uh, I personally think that he shouldn't have taken Joe Flacco's job at first. You know. Um, yeah. A lot of people thought that. As a pure quarterback, uh, Lamar was not there yet this next year the year he won the MVP he was there. so he did show progression and it makes me um, excited for the future of the Ravens and what I really want to bring to the point is is we're the Cowboys of the uh, AFC in my opinion it's like we get so close and every game is hectic and hey I don't I don't know if that's a compliment or insult but yeah i get what you're saying uh i just want to go ahead and mention one guy that i wanted to talk about that we don't have on here and uh it's a running back 
the Ernest Johnson. He played for the Cleveland Browns last year. Uh, he was a big body guy, and he he could run the ball. Uh, I watched him a lot in preseason too, and I really enjoyed uh, what he did there. I think he could be a starter on some of the teams uh, that really need a running back. And I know Cordell Patterson signed with Atlanta, but I think Dearness Johnson should find a way to make it to Atlanta so he could be the workhorse back while Cordell could be the third down back. Any thoughts on that? That makes a lot of sense. Um, one, one place I could see him signing, though, uh, which makes the most sense, and you know how the Jacksonville Jaguars love to spend money, Let's just get him down to Jacksonville, man. Do it all. Let's get him down over there. And then next thing you know, they got James Robertson. They got the artist job. They got Christian Kurt, the best receiver in the world. <laughs> best receiver in the NFL. Yeah. Because he's paid like it, right? Yeah, that was, that was a knows, mistake. We may be completely wrong. Yeah, we may be. I mean, Doug Peterson is a genius. He did win a Super Bowl. That makes the most sense for the Jacksonville Jaguars. They could have a backup running back. Um, And then that would be good for fantasy, too. I mean, he was really, really good last year. I mean, especially when he he needed to. Now, keep in mind, Cleveland had a really good offensive line. Jacksonville, I don't know. You know? Yeah. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. Go ahead and drop in the comment section. Where do you think some of these players are going to go? Uh, I'm sure we'll find out about a lot of these guys in the next couple of days. Uh, or if we, you felt like we left somebody out, go ahead and drop that in the comments section. All right, I paused it. Well, thanks for watching the Losers Win Again channel. I'd like to thank my brother for being our first guest. And uh, we'll definitely be doing some more of these. Uh, drop that in the comments section uh, if you like what we uh, put out for you today. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my Patreon. We'll be having a lot of uh, fantasy content happening right after the draft. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to my Instagram, my YouTube channel, and my TikTok. All those links are down in the description. And thanks for watching the Losers Win Again. We'll see you next time.